Yes. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm Pastor Henry D. Phillips, uh, your teacher for tonight. And if you're watching this lesson via YouTube, I want to encourage you to like and share this video. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to write them in the chat. Uh, you can also uh, write your comments in the chat. Uh, and then if you look into the description of this video, you'll find my email address. So if you don't want to put your, your questions in the comment section, you could go ahead and email me your questions or your comments also. Uh, the other thing that you could put in the comment section is prayer requests. We're the open door house of prayer. We want to pray with you and for you in your prayer request. And if you want uh, that prayer request to come directly to our intercessors, you could go ahead and text your prayer request to 209-565-2116. That number again, 209-565-2116. Uh, also, that is found in the description of this video. So if you didn't get it right then, you don't have to rewind the video. Just go to the description. <laughs> well, I uh, want to thank you for watching. And please subscribe to our channel if you desire to get uh, more content like this from the Open Door House of Prayer. The text for tonight's lesson comes from Ruth, chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 9, uh, the B section of uh, verse 14, and then uh, verse 16. Now, I encourage you to read the whole chapter of uh, chapter 1. But if you, if you want, or you want a good story, go ahead and read chapters 1 through 4. Uh, it is a very I, I'm I'm waiting for the movie Ruth to come Amen. out because <laughs> because I, I I think it's that good that it should be uh, a movie uh, one of those movies of the week that they used to do way back when but anyway uh, I'm going to read into your hearing uh, Ruth chapter one verses one through nine. Uh, 14b and then 16 from the New Living Translation. The title of our lesson is Ruth Follows Naomi. Uh, when In the days when the judges ruled Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi. Their two sons were Malam and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Verse 3, then Elimelech died, and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpah and the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Malon and Kilion died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. Verse 7, with her two daughters-in-law, in she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to herself, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back to your mother's homes, and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. Verse 14b, but Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Verse 16, but Ruth replied, 
Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. So the story mostly takes place in Moab. And if we're looking at a time frame, it's probably between 1130 BC and 1120 BC, somewhere in there. Uh, and that last uh, verse that I read, Ruth, uh, verse chapter one, verse 16, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. That's one of the most quoted verses from, uh, from the book of Ruth. So today we're going to be looking at how God can use families to be a refuge, can, to be a a place of safety uh, so that God's order can come into our lives. So the story starts off talking about the time when the judges uh, were in charge of, of Israel. So uh, if you remember, if you were present with our study last week of uh, Deborah and Barak, how Deborah encouraged Barak and, and all of that. That was the time of the judges. As a matter of fact, there was a time when the book of Ruth was actually a part of the book of Judges. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so it became separate, it, its own book. And in, uh, in the Hebrew text, they put it uh, right in front of the Song of Solomon. Uh, I guess they think, hey, this is a love story. It'll lead right into another love story. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, we see a natural disaster has disrupted families in the country of Judah. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it for me, I know when I'm thinking of natural disasters uh, disrupting people, I automatically go back to Hurricane Katrina. Uh, one, because I'm a New Orleans Saints fan, and I just remember all of those people that had to seek shelter inside Superdome. And then two, uh, at the time, I was a principal. And I remember going into an IEP, and uh, there was uh, these kids uh and they were with their grandfather, and the, gra the grandfather had a thick Cajun accent, and, and they were displaced by Hurricane Katrina. They had to come all the way to Stockton, California, mm. because of, uh, you know, they had no place to stay. I, I know a lot of people that have relatives that are staying in Houston now, because they were displaced by Katrina and, and, and they're still in Houston now. So when we look at this family, Elimelech, he, uh, and, and, uh, I consider a famine, a natural disaster. Right. Yeah. So this famine has gone throughout Judah and Elimelech says, Hey, we got to relocate our family because the, the, we're, we're in a famine. And, uh, and so they go to Moab. Now, Moab was a idolatrous country. Uh, matter of fact, Moab and, and Israel had had some run-ins, uh, you know, but at, at this time, things, I guess, were pretty peaceful. And so Elimelech says, hey, family, I, we got to move. You know, there is nothing here in Bethlehem for us. Uh, by the way, Ephrathites, all, all that Ephrathites in, in Bethlehem are synonymous. So so if it says they were Ephrathites, basically they just lived in a community of Bethlehem. And so uh, in the King James Version, it says they sojourned, which 
uh, when you really look at that word in Hebrew, it means that they were going for a temporary stay. He was just going to go to Moab to find work so that they could sustain themselves during this famine. So I'm also struck by the name of Bethlehem. <laughs> Bethlehem, Bethlehem literally means the house of bread. So there was a famine in the house of bread. Now, was this famine because the people of Judah, you know, were, were sinning? It's possible because this was during the time of the judges and people had experienced that sin cycle, but the word here doesn't explicitly say it. So therefore, we don't know if it was a sanctioned relocation. I mean, because there are times in God's word where it shows that God said, hey, I want you to go. Uh, Joseph is, is a big, he, God allowed him to go into slavery, to go to prison so that he could be in a position to benefit his family. And that, that story is found in, in uh, Genesis. So there is a time where God has said, hey, I need y'all to move out of the promised land so that you could go and get sustenance somewhere else. Now, we like, again, I, I, I don't know because the word doesn't say that this relocation was sanctioned by God. But if my name is Elimelech, which means God is my king, and I live in a place called Bethlehem, which means a uh, house of bread, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to go to the enemy or go to the idolatrous people to wait out a famine. So uh, uh, Elimelech, he's often maligned because he made this decision for his family. And it turns out that this was a tragic decision because not only has Naomi been displaced by a natural disaster, but we find that she has lost her husband. And uh, let's see, yeah, around verse three, it says, then Elimelech died and she had to depend on her sons who married Moabite women. Now, her son's name was Sickly, Malon, and Kilion means uh, pining or, or weakness. So, you know, I, I got to say, uh, Naomi, hey, there's some things were going on in her life. Now, back then, uh, a woman was really dependent on either her father, her brothers, or her husband to sort of be a provider for the family. And so now that Naomi is without her husband, she's probably depending upon her sons. But then not too long after her sons marry these Moabite women, they die. And so now she's been separated from the community of Judah for over 10 years. And to tell you the truth, I can't imagine her pain and suffering have, have lost her husband and now she's lost both of her sons. And really don't know what the relationship is like with uh, her daughter-in-law's family. But I I'm, I'm trying to think that she probably didn't get too much support there. And so that anxiety that I talked about in, in the prayer before uh, we started, I I'm, I'm thinking Naomi might have been feeling that because the source of her economic security, the source, source of her social security had passed away. But then she gets word. She gets word that God has blessed the people once again. Uh, what verse was that? Uh, verse six. So Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. 
That's again from the New Living Translation. So I, I'm sure that Naomi had heard uh, how in Deuteronomy 24, uh, it says, uh, verse 19, it says, when you are harvesting your crops and forget to bring in a bundle of grain for your field, don't go back and get it. Leave it for the foreigners, the orphans, and the widows. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all you do. When you beat the olives from your olive trees, don't go over the bows twice. Leave the remaining olives for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. When you gather the grapes from your vineyard, don't glean the vines after you uh, after they're picked. Leave the remaining grapes for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Remember that you were slaves in the land of Egypt. That is why I am giving you this command. So in Deuteronomy, God has worked out a social security plan for his people. And I'm sure Naomi knows about this. And so she says, hey, you know, I've, I've, uh, we, we left from home in dire uh, situation and we got here. And things have turned even worse for me. So why don't I just go back and be a widow and be able to glean off of uh, the society that I grew up in? Because we don't know what kind of social security plan was happening in Moab. But one of the great things when she makes this decision to go home is that Ruth and Orpah, her, her daughters-in-law, decide to go with her. I, it, it's, it's like, wow. I mean, she had lived such an exemplary life before them that they became attached to her and wanted to go with her. Now, they're on the road back to Judah. And Naomi gets to thinking, you know, these young ladies are, are young and they could probably still get another husband. Me, I'm just going to go and live off the generosity of other people, live off of the Lord. But I don't know how, I don't know if they're going to be able to get a husband in Judah. And so she explains that to them and tells them, Go back to your households. And they cry and they tell her, no, no, we're going with you. And so I, I'm, I'm imagining that they go down the road a little bit more. And Naomi has thought about this and says, look, I, 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 I know how Jewish law works. And really the only way that you're going to be subject to get another husband, this wasn't part of our reading, but it is part of that first chapter. She told them, I would have to have sons that would grow up to marry you. And she said, if I was to get married to right now, would you really want to wait around for one of these boys to grow up? Be old enough to get married. <laughs> right. <laughs> she, she, she's like, come on now. Uh, and so Oprah cries, kisses her and leaves you know, for a mother's house. But uh, Ruth, Ruth, she says, hey, uh, I'm going, she clung to her. And and the word uh, cleave, I believe that's used in the, in, the, uh, in the King James Version is the same word cleave that we studied a couple of weeks ago when we studied the creation of woman, it said a man should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. That same word, the word that God used to describe the ideal relationship between a husband and a wife is a word that is used to describe how Ruth clung to Naomi. She says, hey, uh, you know, the bond that we have forged definitely through the trauma and the tragedy that we have have experienced, but this, this bond, 
I, I don't ask me to give it up. She insisted. She insisted. And she that she showed how committed she was by saying, where you go, I'm going to go. Your people are going to be my people. Your God is going to be my God. And so she gives this confession to Naomi that your God is now my God. I have been converted to follow the one true living God because of the life that I've seen, the, the, the lifestyle that I've seen you live. And even though it's been a lifestyle of pain and sorrow, because of the person you are, I am committed to you. And after that, after Ruth heard this oath that came out of, uh, I'm sorry, after Naomi heard the oath that came out of Ruth's mouth, she didn't attempt to dissuade her anymore. Now, usually, uh, I, I, I love the book of Ruth. Uh, and even in a, a sermon that I have uh, uh, wrote called The Truth About Ruth, I, I found it difficult to pick and choose because it's such, excuse me, it's such a rich book. And it's almost like you could do a sermon on each chapter. Well, guess what? We get to do a lesson on each chapter. <laughs> so, so I'm going to end our lesson right here by letting you know that we were all once outside the realm of God's kingdom. But through his grace, he's invited us inside the borders where we are now part of his family. We didn't deserve it, but God in his mercy forgave our sins in Christ and made us his very own. Just as we found a new family with her mother-in-law, Naomi, so we have found a new home in Jesus. And what he did for us on the cross of Calvary he can do for other people. Amen. It's now our calling to help others find a new community in the family of God. Mm -hmm. See, so just as, you know, and, and like I said, I don't know if this ill-fated decision to go to Moab was sanctioned by God, but, uh, but God definitely uh, put his hand on Naomi and blessed her because she had a daughter-in-law that saw the way that she lived and said, I want to live like that. Even in our moments of despair, we can show people the way to God by the way that we handle the trauma and the tragedy that's happening in our life. And, and, and Naomi and Ruth are examples of that. So are there any questions, comments? I think it has, it was a pretty big thing for Ruth who was raised as a Moabite mm -hmm. and those were idolatrous people. Mm -hmm. And that was deeply ingrained in her, in her upbringing, in her childhood and young womanhood, that she uh, was so strongly moved by the example of Naomi. Yeah. And um, I, I, I just thought that was really powerful, that she was willing not to go back to her home, not to go back to her mother and her family, mm -hmm. but to go forward with Ruth. It was interesting. Yes, Naomi, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said just with Naomi. I mean, I just... <laughs> uh, it was interesting. I went into my living room and my granddaughter was watching a TED Talk. I don't know why. But the, <laughs> TED, talk, <laughs> the TED Talk was talking about uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. And it was saying that uh, you can form a close relationship with somebody by being in their presence for close to 2,000 hours. <laughs> oh. And uh and so I'm 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 thinking, okay, these these young women had been in Naomi's presence for a while. I don't know if it was two thousand hours, but it was well, a ten year get period. Married. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a ten year period. 
and they had been there with her. Now, I, I, I know some people that after being in their presence for a little while, I, I'd, I'd want to run in another <laughs> direction. So, so it's got to be uh, the correct uh, situation where you are actually providing benefit to somebody else's life. And, and to know that Naomi went through all of this tragedy and still provided benefit to somebody else's life, mm -hmm. that is a blessing. Amen. So uh, if somebody could find Matthew 5 and 45 for me and somebody find James 1 and 17, I'm going to need that for when I go to practical point number three. I'm going to start with my practical point. Practical point one, number one is God's people are not automatically exempt from the difficulties of life. Now, uh, I was I was tempted to, uh, do I put automatically, do I put not automatically? And I went ahead and I put automatically in there because there are times that God has allowed us to be exempt from the difficulties of life, but we are not automatically, not automatically exempt. Sometimes God does it for our benefit. Sometimes God does it for other people's benefit where he exempts us from a difficulty, where he shows a miracle in our lives so that other people can be blessed. But what we got to realize is that even in our difficulties, God is working for us. Uh, my my one of my most favorite scriptures to quote is Romans eight and twenty eight, and we know that all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to His purpose. So God is making us more like His Son Jesus in everything that we do. And what can be more good than becoming like Jesus? Now, mm -hmm. now you know that Jesus experienced some suffering and we're not exempt from suffering. But the good thing is that God makes everything good for us. All right, uh, practical point number two. Sometimes God chooses to allow circumstances that leave him as our only hope. Especially, you know, sometimes when we get down to it and uh, we're running in the other direction from God, sometimes he will allow circumstances that leave him as the only hope. Ask Jonah about that. <laughs> you know, he got in a boat saying, God, I can't go to those Ninevites. And God turned the situation around where uh, you're gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tear up this boat. And finally, he was like, "Okay, hey, just throw me overboard, people." Threw him overboard. That didn't get him away from uh, that didn't get him away from the purpose that God had set him for. Big yeah. fish ate him, and then he realized, you know what? I'm sitting here down at the bottom of the ocean in this fish when I could just go ahead and do the will of God. So he prayed, and after he prayed, the fish vomited him up. Amen. So sometimes God chooses allows the, to, to allow our circumstances to leave him as our only hope, where sometimes we should have just started with him. Right. Hey. Okay, the wise person recognizes that every good thing is from God. Now, I say this because Ruth, Ruth was like, oh, God had his hand against me. God had his, and not Ruth, Naomi. Naomi was, God had his hand against me in all of this. So let's read Matthew 5 and 45 to see what we should say to Ruth. Somebody got five and 45? Five and 45, uh, yes. The love for the enemies, is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. Matthew uh, five, 
No, that's, that's six. five and verse forty-five. Forty-five. I'm in the wrong one. I have it. Um, that okay. You may, oh, Go ahead. That, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for He maketh His Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send send this. What's that? Rain, rain. Rain, send us rain. rain on the just and on the unjust. All right. Uh, so let's hear from James 1 17. Right. James 1 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. So the wise person recognizes that good comes from heaven and that, you know, the rain is coming down on everybody. <laughs> the rain is going to hit the just, the rain is going to hit the unjust. Just like the sunshine is going to hit the just and it's going to hit the unjust. So, so we got to let Ruth know, not Ruth, we got to let Naomi know, hey, Naomi, God, God isn't set himself against you. This, you know, to there, there's going to be a trouble in, in everybody's life. But you recognize that, hey, when God is good to you, he's good to you. And he'll also be there in those times when things aren't so good. I mean, I, I don't know if she really recognized how blessed she was to have uh, Orpa and, and Ruth. I mean, they, they the minute their the minute their husbands died, they could have said, Okay, bye, Naomi. I'm going back to my father's house. Maybe he can find me another husband. But they they stuck around with her. And then we're going to go to a foreign land with her, a place that they had never been because of her. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Okay. We should always try to take the biblical way, no matter how uncertain or difficult the outcome. Uh, there there was no doubt that Naomi needed to go back to Judah when God had ended the famine. No doubt, because as I said in uh, in uh, Deuteronomy 24, there was provision made for the orphan and for the widow. And so she knew that she could get her needs met in Judah. But there are some people that would have said, hey, uh, I know that I know that I was just coming here for a little bit. Uh, I mean, the plan was we we're just coming here for a little bit, but I'm stuck in Moab now. No. We even though we don't know what the uh what the outcome is gonna be, even though Doing it the biblical way might be difficult. Take the biblical way. Yeah. Yeah. Our own difficulties should never stop us from desiring God's blessings on others. I mean, uh, the first blessing that we see, and, and there are going to be a lot of blessings in this book of Ruth, but the first blessing that we see is around verse eight or nine where Naomi says, hey, I, I want you to be blessed for the kindness that you've shown me and uh, my sons. And then I want you to be blessed that God would bless you with the security of another marriage. So even though she was expressing, uh, uh, experiencing difficulties herself, Ruth said, hey, I want to bless you all. And, and you know sometimes even though we, 
you know, we might be experiencing difficulties and we can't do something for other people. But one thing we can do is we can pray for them. One thing that we can do is say, hey, God bless you. I, I, I'm not feeling too well today, but God bless you. Somebody needs to say amen to that. Amen and amen. <laughs> okay. And then my final practical point, following God involves sacrifice, but it also involves the hope of his sure provision. And uh, one of one of my personal doctrines that I love is the doctrine of providence. I strongly believe that God has made provision for each of us, and that if we follow His Holy Spirit, that we will make the right turn that leads to God's provision. Now, not always in my life has I, have I made the right turn, but thankfully God has allowed his Holy Spirit to be my GPS back to his provision. Yes, yes. And so that's, that's what I firmly believed would happen to Naomi in this situation. She, she, she got GPS, God's, Spirit let her know that she could go back to her people and find provision. But not only that, that she could be an inspiration to her daughter-in-law. And her daughter-in-law, I, I, I'm not burying the lead here. Her daughter-in-law becomes uh, a part of Jesus's genealogy because she saw the example of Naomi and decided that she wanted Naomi's God to be her God. Amen. 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 All right. Are there any questions or comments? I um was uh, thinking about uh, what I had heard on today. It was talking about hope and um. Uh, Jacob, he made himself miserable for years, those 17 years that Joseph was put in prison. And he had said that he refused um, to stop uh, mourning. I don't, I'm not saying the terminology the way he said it, but he wanted to remain miserable because Joseph was gone mm. and they, they had brought the coat back and the blood was on the coat yeah. and all those years he chose not to have any hope and we don't realize sometimes we feel that we're uh, vested um, to think the negative mm -hmm. to be miserable to be sorrowful to mourn and to grieve, we think that we wear it like a badge on our chest, yeah. like it's an opportunity. But we end up spending numerous days, hours, years as a miserable person for no reason. When when we can hope, when we can have hope, you know. Um, and I was reading, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Trouble. The Lord, is, he gives me a, a verse lately. He's been giving me a verse to meditate on during the week. Yes. And uh, let not your heart be troubled is the one that I've been uh, meditating on. It seems like everywhere I turn, um, a preacher is mm. bringing forth that we're to let not our heart be troubled with all these things that are going on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, with with all that they went through, uh, Naomi definitely could have turned better. I mean, as a matter of fact, when she went back to her homeland and people were calling her pleasant, pleasant, you know, Naomi means pleasant. 
Uh, she was like, no, call me bitter, call me Mara. But uh, thankfully, God had placed in her life uh, Ruth because it, 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 it was it would have been easy for her to just live out a life of bitterness if she didn't have Ruth there to encourage her. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, uh, definitely, even, even if we're going through trials in our life, we can still be a light for people that might be going through stuff that's even worse than us. Amen. It, it, you 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 don't have to live in the land of drought. You don't have to live in the land of Moab. You could come on back home. Amen. 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 I have to, I have to tell myself I'm gonna be like the like the prodigal. I'm gonna come to myself. <laughs> yeah. Get up get up out of this pig pen. Yeah. I mean because she could have said, okay, hey, I'm resigned to just living out my days in Moab where she didn't know, you know, what would happen to her, didn't know what would happen to her daughters-in-law, but she knew she could go back to Judah and at least glean from the fields, at least go through the olive fields and get some, some leftover olives. There was a at least that plan there for her. But God blessed her even more, even more than she could imagine. But that's that's next week's lesson. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Minister Griffin, could you close us in prayer? Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you Lord, for the opportunity that we have given us, let it um, become deeply embedded in our hearts this week, Lord, so that it, so much, Father, that we choose not to go back, Lord, to those uh, things that we were lingering and entertaining and flirting with, Father, but we kick them to the curb, Father and Lord, we accept uh, the joy of the Lord, we thank you for our teacher, our blessed teacher, Father, and blessing us in the word, Father, we pray, God, encouragement for him, God, open doors for the glory of God, each and every one of us, receive it in Jesus' name, and we thank you, bless our homes now as we leave from this place with uh, success, and we thank you for the word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to those of you who are, have participated live. If you're watching this via YouTube, go ahead and like and share this video with somebody. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to the Open Door House of Prayer. Uh, once again, uh, my email address is in the description of this video. And if you would like to join us live, send me an email and I'll make sure that you get the link. All right, God bless everybody. Enjoy your evening. God bless. God bless. Thank Love. you.